Hi everyone, it's Stark's Warehouse here once again, and welcome to a third video in a series of videos that describes how I make my latex prosthetic pieces for Halloween. Now this video concentrates on the sculpting and moulding of the prosthetic, so let's take a look. Now as from the previous video, we have a plaster cast of my chin. If you have not yet seen that video, please go ahead and take a look. Now I want to start by taking some of the oil-based clay and putting the clay directly onto the plaster cast. Now you want to put as much or as little as this clay as you like onto the plaster, depending on what kind of prosthetic piece that you're going to be making. Now I've gone ahead here and sculpted my prosthetic a little more. As you can see, I'm just making an extended chin prosthetic. Um, as you can see what I'm doing right now, I'm just using a cheap painter's tool just to smooth out and thin off the edge of the prosthetic. Now one of the most important things about a prosthetic is having thin edges because when you apply the prosthetic here to your face you want the thin edges to blend easily into your skin and obviously if you've got thick edges it's not going to do that as well so the thinner the edges the better and as you can see the marks from the tool don't worry too much about these as you can just go back with your finger a little later and smooth them off just as I did and there we are my sculpting for this prosthetic is basically near enough done. I do have a little bit more that I'm going to do in just a second, but the sculpture part is basically done. As you can see, the edges are nicely smoothed off, the best that I can get with this clay. And like I said, I've got a little bit more to do. Um, now I'm going to use a technique that I learned from Don Lanning over at Stan Winston's School of Character Arts. If you've not seen or heard of that, I recommend that you go visit the website at stanwinstonschool.com. I'll put a link in the description below. Now this technique um, should be using a spray bottle, but I didn't have a spray bottle on hand, so I'm just going to put a little bit of water on top of the clay and use some cling film or saran wrap, uh, whichever you call it. And just want to stretch it over the complete sculpture and push all the air bubbles and water out of it. The water is basically acts as a release. And here I've got paintbrush, just with the bristles cut down, so they're a bit more stubbier and a bit more pointier. The basic technique is dabbing the clay through the saran wrap with the stubby paintbrush. And this basically adds lots and lots of fine little dots, which replicate skin texture, like all the skin pores and things like that. It's a nice little technique that comes in very handy and makes the prosthetic look a lot more realistic. So you want to go ahead and carry on doing this technique for the entire sculpture, just completely cover it all. And once you're done, you can go ahead and take the film off. And I'm not too sure how well you can see this and fire the camera, but it does leave a very realistic pore texture on the clay. It's very nice. Okay, so next you just want to dab off the water. Obviously I'm using a textured cloth here. You don't want to dab too hard to actually put any of the texture from the paper towel into it, but you don't want to dab too soft as well. So just dab all the water and dry it off. Now once again, as in previous videos, we're just going to make a clay mould wall. Now I started off by taking the oil-based clay that we had as before rolling it into lengths and just positioning it along the very bottom side of the plaster cast of the chin. Now I wanted to leave a nice gap between the actual sculpture of the prosthetic and the edge of the mould because I wanted to have a nice seal when we put it back together later. Now as you can see I built up the base of the clay wall. I'm going to carry on building the clay wall up until it's at a height above the uh, prosthetic sculpture. Because obviously when they pour the plaster into this, we want the clay clay wall to be higher than the actual sculpture so that the plaster will go above the sculpture. As you can see here, the clay wall is getting to a height which is pretty decent and above the height of the sculpture as I said before. Um, if I did do this again, I probably would use more clay, although I didn't have it because the clay walls I made was a little bit flimsy and kept sagging a little bit. Either that or I would take some sticks and make a structure so that the clay walls stood up more. 
as you'll find out what happened in just a second. So now that we have the clay wall made, it's time to add some mould release, and again I'm just going to be using Vaseline. Um, you just want to take the Vaseline and just rub it all over the plaster parts. I wouldn't be too fussed about the clay parts because the clay will pull away from the plaster very easily, but if you get the plaster stuck together, then it will not come away. So you want to make sure that all the plaster is covered. I wouldn't be too bothered about getting it over the clay, it doesn't really matter about that. Use my fingers to get into the parts that I can reach. Um, and obviously the parts I can't reach, I just took a paintbrush and brushed it into the corners. So you just want to make sure everywhere is well and thoroughly covered with mould release. Okay, so now we've got that sorted, we can start to mix the plaster up once again. As per before, you just want to go by the directions on the box or bag. And just mix it up accordingly. So now that we've got all the measurements in, you can go ahead and throw your hand in there and start mixing up once again. Now the main part about mixing plaster is to get all the lumps out. So all these lumps that you see here, you want to mix it thoroughly until you get a nice creamy paste without any lumps, as you can see right here. And we're ready for pouring. Once it's all ready, I'm going to take the plaster and pour it into the lowest point on the clay walls. You don't want to pour it directly onto the sculpt. You just want to let the, uh, the plaster build up around the sculpture. Now as before I said about having a structure around uh, the clay walls this time. Um, because the clay was very flimsy, the weight of the plaster was actually pushing down on the clay wall, as you can see right here, which made it sag quite a lot. Um, obviously I didn't mix enough up because of the clay walls expanding and giving more room. So I went ahead and mixed up a thicker batch and poured it directly onto the area that needed covering. Um, and obviously I wanted to keep it all in this area rather than, sp than spreading out to areas that didn't really need it. So I put it directly on and just by using my hand I kind of guided the plaster into the area that I needed it. So it was a nice thick and wasn't going to break easily. Now as you can see here, I just took plaster from the areas that didn't need it, uh, from where the clay was sagging, and brought it up to the part that did need it, above the actual sculpt. At the same time as doing this, uh, you can actually smooth it out with your hands as well, so you don't need to leave any sharp edges on the plaster. Now after about an hour, once the plaster is set, I started taking off the clay just as before. So you want to take the clay off and once the clay has been taken off then we can go ahead and pull both parts of the mould apart. Now because there's a vastly mould release they should easily pull apart just like this. There we go. And once you've done that you can go ahead and peel out the clay. You should just peel out with no problem at all. And obviously because of the Vaseline that we put on a little bit earlier so that the parts can come apart, um, we're also going to need to clean that up as well. So once you've got the clay out of the mould, which is no good now, so we can just throw that away. I'm going to take a paper and towel and once again just clean the mould free of any Vaseline or any debris. So obviously you want to get all the clay off and any excess Vaseline that we have. And basically once you've done that, this part of the process is complete. So I just want to thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe this video and I'll be back with you very soon with another video on the casting of the prosthetic. So keep watching and I will see you again soon. Thanks guys.